So hi everyone! In this last video of the three-part series, we're going to discuss Granger causality, uh, impulse response functions, forecast error variance decomposition, and uh, forecasting using VARP, which is uh, one of its biggest functions. So in the last video, uh, we diagnosed the model that we built in video one. So now we're going to try and implement the things that VAR is usually um, typically leads to. So notice we didn't necessarily interpret the coefficients of the uh, main VAR uh, implementation. That's because VAR is typically used okay, so that we can interpret okay, the things that we will do in this particular video. So its applications are more or less used vis-a-vis -vis its uh, shear coefficients. Okay, so the first uh, thing we'll do is we'll do Granger causality. And uh, it's a low form of causality. So we want to see an association between uh, two variables, which is uh, strictly speaking ha uh, more uh, of a causality than simple correlation. So we're going to uh, apply uh, this in this VAR regression. So uh, we can do two types of uh, Granger's here because we have two uh, variables. So what we can do is we can see if GDP okay, causes uh, unemployment, Granger causes unemployment, or if unemployment, Granger causes GDP, or in both directions. So uh, in the OLS example that we had um, early in the first video, we noted that uh, the relationship, if you do a simple OLS regression, is just one way. So in our case, it's from unemployment to GDP. But in VAR, what we can do is we can do GDP to unemployment, unemployment to GDP, GDP to itself, for that matter, and then unemployment to itself. So we can see if there's unidirectional or bidirectional or no causality altogether. So uh, let's implement that now. So that's uh, so let's create an object, Granger GDP. And the command to do Granger causality in VARS is causality. Okay, causality. So we're going to use our results model one open. Model or oh, open there, and the cause. Okay, so our cause now will be GDP for now. Uh, whoops, sorry, GDP. Then, uh, then let's do let's see its results. Granger GDP. So, notice that um, uh, we have our results here. So, Granger causality. Our null hypothesis is that GDP does not Granger cause an un unemployment. And we can see here that we cannot reject that null hypothesis because our p-value is greater than 0 0.05. So in this case, GDP does not Granger cause unemployment. Uh, and then we also have our instantaneous causality here. But generally, we are, for now, we're just going to look at this one. Okay, so uh, in this case, GDP doesn't Granger cause unemployment. So let's see it from the other direction. So Granger unemployment, okay, causality, okay, model, okay, whoops, cause now. So instead of GDP being the cause, let it be unemployment now. Okay, and okay, we run. Okay, then Granger unemployment. Now we can see here, same as before, okay? Our null hypothesis is that unemployment does not Granger cause GDP. And we find here that that is also the case since we fail to reject the null. So we can see that seemingly, okay, while Okun's law applies to most, applies to developed countries, in the case of the Philippines at least, not generalizing for all developing countries, it doesn't seem to hold at least for our sample, okay? Because, um, that they don't Granger cause each other. Now, something VAR is useful for, and what a lot of people use VAR for, is something called impulse, okay, impulse response functions. Okay, so impulse response functions. Okay, so let's create uh, an impulse response. So the way we're going to do is we're going to see how a variable would behave Okay, n periods from now, say for example, how GDP would behave n periods from now, if I shock uh, 
the variable on uh, if i shock variables inside the system so if you recall our system is composed of gdp and unemployment say i shocked um i shocked unemployment say unemployment went up so it's a positive shock what would happen to gdp so it's a very useful tool in seeing how variables respond to shocks in itself and to other variables so we can do that so gdp irf so okay the command to do an impulse response function is irf Okay, then model open one. So we're gonna get an IR from that. Our impulse, okay, what will be shock is un uh, what will use to shock GDP is unemployment, employment, okay, employment, and the response will be equal to GDP, okay, GDP. Then we want to do the sort of forecast, the pseudo forecast. 20 quarters ahead okay then boot equals true okay so uh just to re-explain the command um we want to generate an impulse response using the model that we used okay we're gonna shock okay unemployment and we're gonna see the response of gdp to a shock in unemployment and then we want to plot it out 20 periods ahead okay so if we do this then we can do so notice that it will create an object uh, an object gdp irf and we can plot this so typically irfs are plotted so that it can see that we can see easily okay so let's label the graph okay why label is gdp because that's the response a name so that type let's give it a title shock from unemployment and we should see a graph and notice okay this is the response of gdp if we increased unemployment so a positive shock to unemployment notice in the first period will really decrease gdp and it will decrease it okay but it will eventually recover a bit up to some point okay and then uh peter out but notice that um the effect is relatively permanent because it always decreases gdp but note okay note those dotted lines that you see here, those are the confidence intervals. So we have a relatively big room for error. And notice that zero is there. So in effect, there could be no effect of between GDP and unemployment. So, but on the basis of how the IRF is, on what our point estimate is, we see that uh, unemployment will negatively affect GDP. Okay. So next, we can do that same procedure for, um, for unemployment. Uh, IRF the okay, unemployment IRF so let's do IRF model open one okay then uh, this one would be so uh, we can copy this entire thing and just change it okay and it will be our impulse now will be GDP so let's see how unemployment responds employment and uh, let's run this command then we plot okay unemployment irf okay y lab so our y lab now will be unemployment then main is equal to shock from gdp or output in this case then we have here so notice in the first period we can see that um, unemployment goes down actually then goes up then goes down then goes up so we can see a very indecisive sort of relationship here which is kind of reference from our granger causality that these two variables at least in a philippine case are not as related to each other okay so that's an impulse response okay next what we can do is our variance decomposition Com Position. So we can uh, name another object FEVD1. So we're going to create now a graph that will explain to us how much the shocks, okay, uh, how much the how much these variables are influenced by shocks. So the command for that is FEVD. Okay, then we're going to model one open. Then we want to do that N ahead, say 10. It can be any period. And let's run that. Then uh, we want to plot FEVD1. 
Okay, what you'll notice is here. So look, um, we can see that both okay, GDP and unemployment are relatively influenced by their own shock. So look at GDP. At uh, the first period ahead, the entire change in GDP will just be due to GDP. Okay, then for periods ahead, we can see that there's some proportion of unemployment, but it's very, very minimal. And you can see a very similar case when it comes to unemployment and GDP. So while it may be a bit bigger, at least that uh, the impact of GDP on unemployment on future periods. Okay, so uh, uh, the fact remains that unemployment uh, mainly affects uh, unemployment. So shocks in unemployment are typically the ones that are going to influence the value of unemployment. So it doesn't necessarily correlate that uh, these the values of the future values of unemployment will heavily be uh, influenced by future shocks in GDP, at least in this case for the Philippines. Okay. So last, and I think um, what most people will be wanting to do with it is VAR forecasting. Okay. So we can forecast using the VAR model we had. So forecast, okay, predict. Okay, so that's the command to forecast. And then we have model Okun 1. Okay, and then let's say we want to forecast four quarters ahead. Okay, so typically I suggest a low number here so that, uh, especially given the data that we have. So typically these are short-term forecasts to influence policy. So let's use a low number there and let's set our confidence interval to 95%. So we want to forecast uh, the value okay, of GDP and unemployment for periods ahead given our model specification. Okay, so here. And then uh, what we can do is we can do we can create something called a fan chart, which uh, is typically seen in reports. So if you go to central bank reports and then they give you the forecast for GDP or say unemployment. They're typically done in fan charts, so forecast. Okay. And then names equals GDP. So this first command, the second command here, this one, will give us the fan chart forecast for GDP. And what you'll notice is that GDP is going to be probably uh, stable. So we're going to expect roughly 6.5% in the next few um quarters that we in the next four quarters roughly the same and if we forecast okay so let's try to forecast now uh, unemployment names equals unemployment employment okay. uh, and unemployment will tend downward okay so it will tend uh, a little bit downward and actually it will slightly increase a bit and then trend to the downward and Notice that uh, it becomes a little bit more gradient. That's just um, the possible values that you can take and the errors. So that's essentially the confidence interval. So the, that's how we forecast uh, using VAR and using R. So again, in this video, we tackled Granger causality, impulse responses, variance decomposition, and forecasting. So all in all, okay, that completes generally what the most common use case for a VAR looks like.